Welcome to St John's for our weekly update. Uh, today I'm standing next to our Anzac flag and that's because we're heading towards Anzac Day. Uh, this flag uh, is a really significant artefact of the Gallipoli campaign. In fact, because of the work of one of our wonderful guides, Denzel Scrivens, uh, it has been discovered that this flag was the last flag to fly on the Gallipoli Peninsula before um, and was the last flag removed as the troops withdrew. Previously it was believed that the last flag to fly on the Gallipoli Peninsula was in the War Museum in Canberra, but here it is and we're grateful uh, to Denzel for the amount of work he put in to discovering the true provenance of this very special piece of the cathedral treasury. Anzac Day is closely connected to the life of St John's. Uh, canon David Garland, who was a canon of this cathedral and a chaplain during World War I, uh, was the person who had the idea of observing Anzac Day. And to this day, we uh, honour uh, Canon David Garland's understanding of Anzac Day. For him, it was very important that observances of Anzac Day occur in the public square. And so he devised an order of service that was solemn, respectful, and called uh, on the pe gathered people to observe a minute's silence in memory of those who had fallen and then invited people to pray for peace, that war would be no more. And he designed it to be a service that people of all faiths and none could attend. And that's why he wanted it in, it in the public square, because in those days, uh, just over 100 years ago, um, sectarian rivalries were strong and bitter. And so he took the observance, took basically what is a sacred ceremony, and placed it in the public square to remind us that the sacred and the public are not that separate, as sometimes we think, and that Anzac Day was a day for all people. So to that end, when we have uh, worship here at St John's on Anzac Day, as we will on Sunday, we acknowledge Anzac Day, but we also hold to the lectionary and observe the fourth Sunday of Easter in, on this occasion hoping that people will have been into the public square to stand side by side with other, other citizens to do the Anzac observance and ceremonies uh, in the place that Canon David Garland uh, had the bright idea of thinking it should take place. Because even to this day, um, it means that people who have no faith allegiance uh, don't have to go into someone else's sacred space and they can discover the sacred and pray for peace together. In a few weeks time on the 9th of May at Evensong we will be launching a very spe special exhibition that uh, a number of people from the cathedral community have been working on and uh, people from outside that community as well and that is to uh, celebrate the ministry of the ordained women in this diocese. Uh, the exhibition will largely be online and to that end we actually need the help of someone who has some skills. Um, you really only need to know how to operate uh, Word, Microsoft Word, because the program we use looks like Microsoft Word. We do need the assistance of someone who, uh, who will help us up upload some of the content. Uh, some incredible work has gone into gathering the photos and the stories of the ordained women of this diocese and it would help us greatly if um, there was someone who had a bit of time uh, to help us uh, bring that exhibition to pass. On Wednesday coming at 10 o'clock we will be hosting a memorial for workers who died on the job. Very important day, a day to remind us that we need to be vigilant and encourage those who govern us and those who make laws to protect workers uh, stay vigilant as well. So I invite you to come along and pay your respects to those who have fallen in the workplace. Copies of Ford Day by Day, that wonderful little publication that gives a daily Bible reading and a daily reflection for each day of a three-month period, 
Uh, the next uh, edition, which uh, begins in May, uh, has arrived and you'll be, uh, you can get your copy from the cathedral. It costs uh, $5. Or if you'd like us to post you one, it'll cost you 7 And if you'd like one posted to you, please uh, contact the cathedral office. Our outreach uh, through Offerings Project, uh, the opportunity for us to uh, assist other parts of the church uh, in bringing the uh, light of the gospel uh, to places other than where we are ministering. Uh, our, our appeal for the month of April is the Easter appeal of the Anglican Board of Missions. And uh, that, work, that appeal is uh, this month helping the work of the Coming of the Light mission. It's a new mission of the Melanesian uh, brothers uh, to and with the people of the Torres Strait Islands. So I commend that to you and I uh, hope as a community we will find the resources to enable that really important work amongst uh, and with uh, members of our First Nations people. And uh, this year, uh, in July, they'll be celebrating 150 years of the coming of the light. Uh, the expression that the people of the Torres Strait Islands give to their first contact with missionaries. We've had a few wonderful celebrations in the life of our cathedral community in this past week. Uh, Helen and Bruce Wooten are celebrating the birth of their first grandchild, William. Uh, Eric and Sandy Anning are celebrating 56 years of marriage. And Mavis and John Ralph are celebrating 62 years of marriage. As the Archbishop uh, remarked to Mavis on Sunday, they were married before he was born. So congratulations to all those people. We are now about midway through the Easter season. Sunday coming is the fourth Sunday of Easter. We celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday every Sunday, every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter. We hear from the chapter 10 of John's Gospel and reflect on the way Jesus is the Good Shepherd to us. Thank you for all you do for the life of the cathedral. Thank you for the way you stay in touch with one another to ensure that community continues outside the walls of this building because after all we gather together for worship in order to be dispersed, as the deacon says, go in peace to love and serve the Lord, alleluia, alleluia. We go out in peace to love and serve the Lord so that uh, the commonwealth of God may be enlarged by the way we live our lives and the way we live and love those with whom we come in contact. Peace be with you.